गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून सर एम आई ऑडिबल टुडे यस सर बट देयर इज अ नॉइज बिहाइंड नो सर नॉट द ट्रेन समथिंग अबाउट माइक आई गेस सर We'll start from where we had stopped. Okay. I wanted to discuss the. Uh, so, so basically, what I would like to tell you is, we in the previous class we discussed about these uh, theorems. I hope we have gone through this particular. So there is a disturbance. Now what disturbance we are experiencing? Is it clear now? No sir. Yeah, check it now. Sir, for me it's uh, still same, sir. Disturbance in terms of what? Like there is a noise, sir. Now check it. Please check it now. So now it's all right. Yes, sir. No. So in my previous class. I did mention to you about the five bond theorems, and I also told you that you have to check these theorems in the in sense. Please don't believe me. Okay, you have to check these theorems on your own. There is some yellow patch that is coming up. Yeah, now. Yes, sir. So, in my previous class, I did mention to you about the five bond theorems that we discussed, and I also told you to work out the five bond theorems that we discussed in the last class. You work it out physically with that particular formula of P, and then you will be able to arrive that whatever I am mentioning on the slide. Has some meaning into it. Next, we move on to the four theories that are there. So re remember, we have we just discussed the four theorems, uh, the five theorems that are supposed to be studied as far as bond valuation is concerned. Now we have to understand that there are four theories as far as bond valuation is concerned. But I also recently checked out that you don't have these four theories. Okay, so in fact, there are no theories for you. There are only bond theorems, but the theories are not not a part of your syllabus. Okay, but whatever said and done, these theories are there. Okay, they are there for you to understand. I won't spend time on explaining you these theories. I expect everyone to go through these particular theories and come back to me if you are not able to understand. Remember, it is not there mentioned in the syllabus. That is the reason I am ignoring this. But if you want me to take it, I can definitely take this particular four theories that we are supposed to study. I leave the choice to you. Either if you want me to discuss, I'll discuss it. If not, you want to just go through it once and then come back to me for any explanation. You are always welcome to do so. I leave the option to you. Please tell me should I explain or should I proceed. So there's a lot of disturbance, sir. 
So audible, sir. But uh, when we that plastic sound will be there, no, sir. The same so, uh, sound we are getting, sir, with your voice. Sir, there is a problem with that headphones, sir. Even in tracks or the class, sir, same thing happens, sir. Is it the same now? Yes, sir. Of this particular slide, just go through this particular slide once. Yes, sir. Now there is no disturbance. Is there any disturbance now? Sir, there is disturbance, sir. There is disturbance, sir. Just go through it. Let me see what can I do. Yes, sir. Yeah, please check check my audio now.
somebody please respond is my audio clear now sir yes sir yes sir yes, sir. very clear or still there is a disturbance so it's clear now okay yes ma'am yeah so let us start Okay, we were discuss trying to discuss about the. Uh, by the way, did you get what I what I tried to tell you before five minutes? I said we discussed with the bond theorems. There are four theories that were supposed to be discussed, but in your syllabus, those theories are not included. If you want me to go through it, I will explain to you. If not, I will skip it. Kindly go through the theories once. Come back to me. If you have any doubts, I leave the option to you. If you want me to discuss, I will discuss it. If you want me to skip and move forward, I will move forward. What do you want me to do? So we'll go through it. Uh, next content to teach us, sir. These are the four theories. I'll just tell you. Oh, sir, there is again disturbance. Do you still experience disturbance now? Yes, sir. So while you're speaking, it's like disturbance is there. Sir, there is problem with that headphone, sir. Yes, sir. I think so. The same problem was with Prayaksha's class. But uh, are you able to hear it even after I just said? Able to hear, or is still there is some disturbance? So we are able to hear, but in between there is a disturbance. So we can hear your voice, sir. Okay. Fine. So today I just let us see what happens tomorrow. Okay. Fine. So the first theory that we have to understand is called expectation theory. Next is liquidity. Third is preferred habitat, and last one is market segmentation theory. Okay. all those theories are mentioned here okay kindly go through it once and if you have any doubts come back to me i will explain we will move to the next part the next important question that is often been asked in in your exams is about what are the factors that help in determining interest rates so if i have to say that my deposit rate is 10% or if my deposit rate is Eight percent. On what basis did you arrive at this eight percent? Or if you say that I want to lend a loan, banks generally lend a loan. When they give a loan, they have a rate of interest. And whenever there is a rate of interest, a certain rate is being charged. Right? A certain rate is being charged. Let us suppose that you have taken a car loan. and the rate of interest is 14% 14% on what basis did that particular bank or the financial institution come to a conclusion that we should go ahead with 14% why not 15% or why not 12% what caused them to say that we are going to lend money at 14% rate of interest so if this question is been asked the answer for any uh, you know any question related related to determinants of interest rate the answer is in front of your screen so whenever a rate of interest is been decided there are few factors that have to be taken into consideration first 
there is something called a short term short term risk and we are talking about when we are talking about short term risk we have to take into consideration the inflation part of it because that is a very important concept in determining the rate of interest next the longer the tenure you give the more will be the interest rates for example if you take a loan any loan for that matter if you take it for a shorter period of time the rate of interest will be considerably lesser but on the other hand if you take the same loan for a longer period of time then the rate of interest keeps on increasing so that is where the concept of inflation and time comes into picture right next is the real growth rate once we talk of real growth rate i told you an equation that if you have borrowed a loan at 14% rate of interest you have to segregate that 14% into two major components first is what is the real rate of interest for example for example just look at this if you have taken an education loan at 14% rate of interest excuse me sir yes. sir there is lots of disturbance sir Yes, sir, but the disturbance is there only. See, while I am talking, is there any disturbance after that? I think there is some. Plastic. Yes, sir. So while you are talking, so while you are speaking, which. No sir. Please check now. Yes, sir. We can hear now. Okay. So these are the uh, main determinants of interest rate. Okay. As I said, what is more important for you to understand is. the real growth rate or the real rate okay. i gave you an example of 14% of rate of interest that you have taken for education loan you have taken this loan for education now you need to understand what made you arrive or what made bank arrive at this 14% so there are two components to it 
first is look what is the inflation in that particular country if inflation is at six and a half percent if inflation in six is six and a half percent which means the actual rate of interest is going to be 14 percent minus 6.5 that is the actual rate of interest can anyone tell me what is 14 percent minus 6.5 percent Seven point five, sir. Seven point. So actually. Speaking, Seven point five. So actually speaking, your education loan should be only 7.5 percent. Your education loan should be only 7.5 percent. But how much are you paying? You are paying 14 percent. Why are you paying 14 percent? Because inflation in India is at 6.5. So whenever we are talking about a short term interest rate or short term rate on any loan or any deposit, we have to take into consideration inflation, time and also the real growth rate. So this is your real growth rate or real uh, rate of interest. This is your inflation adjusted rate of interest and this is your inflation rate. Clear? So in short term, these are the points that we have to take into consideration. Next part that we have to take into consideration is a concept called as default premium. Understand one thing. Let us suppose that there are two businesses. One is owned by you and one is owned by your friend. Both of you have the same risk appetite. Both of you need a loan of around 10 lakh rupees and both of you approach the same bank. But when the bank gives you a loan, the bank gives you 10 lakh rupees okay probably at 12 percent rate of interest for five years but to your friend the bank will give the same loan amount thus for the same tenure instead of giving it for 12 percent but he gives it for 15 percent the bank says we yeah, will give you but the rate of interest is going to be 15 percent what is the reason for this the reason is the bank feels that you are a genuine person but your friend is not a genuine person he may default the loan he may default the loan so if there is a default there is a risk and the risk could be because of the nature of business that he has if he is into seasonal business then it's a big problem to get a loan on the other hand if there is no business risk there could be some financial risk in terms of the person is not able to manage his capital structure properly or your friend is not able to manage your EBIT properly or he is not able to source funds at a lower risk whatever could be the problem there is some financial problem that has been faced and when banks come to know this they tell you that I will be able to give you a loan at 12% whereas for your friend I will be able to give a loan only at 15%. Why is this? It's because the bank fears giving loan to your friend and whenever there is a fear there is a risk and whenever there is a risk the rate of interest keeps on jumping higher. So that is the reason we call it as default premium. So what is the default premium here? Default premium is 3%. Why is it 3%? You are getting a loan at 12 percent for the whatever same condition same assets and everything your friend is getting the same loan for 15 percent now if you look at the difference between these two values it comes out to three percent why is this three percent extra charge to your friend it is because it is called as a default premium why default premium it is because your business your friend's business is a bit risky business it could be a seasonal business or there is there might be financial misappropriations these are the two main reasons why the default premium keeps on increasing next we come to special features it might so happen that when if you are a company if you are a financial company and your job is to play in the stock market especially in the derivative market 
you put a lot of money into call my call money or market and put money market in such case what happens is there is a huge amount of risk that is involved there is a huge amount of risk that is involved when you play in this particular market so in order to reduce this particular risk what banks do banks will charge a heavy rate of interest if you are obtaining money for this particular purpose that is the reason the rate of interest keeps on going and last one is of course the concept called as maturity premium maturity premium is nothing but the money that you are going to get or the premium that you are going to get on maturity so if you are going to receive something more than 1000 if you are going to receive something more than 1000 why i am saying always 1000 is because par value of the bond is always 1000 So if you are getting getting anything above thousand rupees, whatever extra money that you get over and above thousand rupees, we call it as premium. And more so, this money is going to achieve, so it's going to be realized at the end of the ten-year loan. That's the reason we call it as maturity premium. Getting it? Are you able to understand this? So these are the main reasons why. Uh, yes, these sir. are the main reasons how interest rates are been determined. First is short term, second is default premium, third is special features, and fourth one is what will be the maturity premium. So these factors help in determining the rate of interest for the any loan or for that matter any deposit. The next important concept that we have to discuss today is called duration. Now, what do you mean by the word duration? Duration is nothing but it talks about only one concept. It talks about time. duration basically talks about time let us suppose i am giving an example let us suppose rashmi has a loan uh, rashmi has given money and against that money the company has issued a bond so let us say rashmi has a bond okay i will call this as bond a okay she has purchased this particular bond in the 0th year the condition is every from the start of every financial year the condition is from the start of every financial year 3 months down the company will pay the rate of interest in other words april may and june this becomes first 3 months so rashmi is going to receive a rate of interest sorry rashmi is going to receive a rate of interest in june i'm just giving an example rashmi has purchased a bond a in the 0th year the condition is from the start of any financial year 3 months down the line the company is going to pay you the rate of interest so rashmi has purchased a bond rashmi has purchased a bond worth 1000 rupees okay carrying a rate of interest of 15% what is 15% of 1000 So Rashmi is going to receive one fifty rupees every year for next. Let us say the bond, the maturity time is five years. So for next five years, Rashmi is going to receive in June around one hundred and fifty rupees. Clear? Now, and at the end of the ten year, she is going to receive her entire thousand rupees, which is nothing but the par value of the bond or the maturity value of the bond is what she is going to receive. Now, ideally speaking. Rashmi will receive the rate of interest for the first year in June. Second year she will receive in in June. Third year also in June. Fourth year and fifth year also she will receive the money in June. Now tell me one thing. Does it make sense for Rashmi? Does it make sense for Rashmi to retain to retain this particular money or to retain this particular investment till the end of the year? does rashmi have to maintain her investment after receiving the last interest on 5th june 2020 okay if she receives her final interest on 5th june 2020 does it make sense for rashmi to retain this particular bond till the time of maturity is my question
looking for response no sir no you are not understanding or no no doubt you are not understanding or there are no doubts so can you explain it again suppose my question is my just explain to me give me a minute thank you okay i'll just explain to you to you here rashmi has a bond Okay, she has purchased this particular bond for thousand rupees. Okay, at let's say fifteen percent rate of interest. Okay, and the tenure of the bond is let us say five years. Clear with the story? Yes, sir. So she has this particular bond. okay and let us say this is the value of one bond like that she has around 10 bonds so what will be her investment what is rashmi's investment 10000 so rashmi all together has invested 10000 rupees at 15% rate of interest for Five years, and the condition is. The condition is from the start of every financial year, from the start of every financial year till the end of the financial year, the rate of interest is going to be paid. The rate of interest is going to be paid three months after the financial year starts. So, in in other words, okay, my financial year is going to start from April. Three months down the line. Okay, three months down the line. That means somewhere in June, Rashmi is going to get her interest. And what is the interest? Fifteen percent of ten thousand rupees is how much? Thousand five hundred. Yes, sir. She will receive thousand five hundred. Okay. Now she will receive this thousand five hundred for next five years. she will continue to receive this amount for next 5 years now she has received this money in june next she will receive in june next she will receive in june next also june and next also june now my question is after she receives all this money does it make sense for rashmi to retain this bond with her till maturity let us suppose she has purchased the bond in january okay and by december or uh, you know uh, the question is the bond is going to mature in december after 5 years in june itself she has received 150 rupees my question is does it make sense for rashmi to retain all her investment till december and get the maturity bond So obviously, anyone will have to retain it until it matures, sir. Because we also want the want the principal amount back. Even if we want to sell it to someone, no one will buy it, sir. Why? You can always sell it in the wholesale debt market. Sir, but the maturity is nearby, no, sir. I have also received the last interest. Then who will buy it, sir? so i have also received the last year's interest and the maturity is nearing sir bonds okay will buy it sir no my my question you have not answered my question is should i keep the bond till maturity or should i dispose it off so that's what i'm saying no one can dispose it because 
it's nearing its maturity sir so if i want my principal amount back i have to retain it sir okay now if this is the answer then we have to understand one calculus called as duration and that is what i am trying to tell you duration means it says duration the concept of duration says that if you have a loan of 15 if you have taken or if you have borrowed money for 15 10000 rupees or if you have uh, a company has issued bond for 10000 rupees at 15% rate of interest for 5 years you receive the interest for the first year second year third year and finally you receive the interest in the fourth fourth year and the fifth year in the fifth year the moment you receive interest the moment you receive interest and if there is still some time left for the bond to mature if there is still some time left for the bond to mature it is presumed that it doesn't make sense for you to retain this bond till maturity because whatever you are going to get here the same amount you are going to get it here so if i am going to receive 500 rupees benefit today and if i am going to receive 500 rupees benefit 3 months down the line which is more better obviously when i receive 500 in hand that is more better so that is what duration talks about it says even if the bond is worth 5 years it is doesn't really make sense to hold the bond for full 5 years the moment you receive the last year's rate of interest there is nothing left in the bond the moment you receive last year's interest there is no nothing left in the bond and if not, there is nothing left in the bond why will anyone come to you pur to purchase the bond for even 1000 rupees you have to sell it before below 1000 rupees right but if you sell it below 1000 rupees you will incur a loss because you don't receive your uh, maturity value in such case the concept of duration comes into picture duration says whatever might be the length of the tenure if you have to calculate a return or if we cal have to calculate the duration then we can use a particular formula and find out the value of duration duration is a technique that tells you that it doesn't really make sense for you to retain the bond till maturity once you get your last installment that is the time you start disposing of that particular asset because you are definitely not going to get anything even if you retain the bond till maturity that is what this particular concept says getting it all of you yes sir any doubts in understanding this So I wanted to clarify one doubt, sir. Yes. So when do we receive the principal amount of uh, bond, sir? The At the end of the period, right, sir? The moment you surrender your bond. Yes, sir. The moment you surrender your bond to the issuing company, within two or three working days, the money will be transferred in your account. Today it is happening to any FT. That is the reason. So, so when we buy bonds or shares, we do have an option to surrender the uh, securities before the maturity date. You can do that, provided you know that there is nothing left out in that particular instrument to earn some higher return. Yes, sir. If you feel that there is something worth in this particular company share, then you retain the share as it is. It will remain with you as it is. Yes, sir. but if your intention is to make quick money it doesn't really make sense to retain the bond for more than the prescribed time of time period so in this particular session what we are going to discuss is we are going to discuss a concept called as bond uh, you know uh, bond valuation or bond modified duration what i want you to do is i want you to quickly go through the all these points and note down this particular formula because again from your exam point of view time point of view a lot of questions have come on this part Please go through this. 